Not again. My eyes got distracted. Blind hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Socket Radio. This week, I did promise that there was going to be a special guest, and the special guest is Zoe Two Dots, who is a Pokemon Go YouTuber. Most of you may have seen her featured in uh, Trainer Tips Nick's uh, YouTube channel when she did the International Dex. She was one of the YouTubers that was um, featured on his channel. So here she is today. Hey guys, how are you? Zoe here. Um, awesome to be on the program. I'm really excited to get into some of these questions. I've been um, thinking about what they might be. So yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to get into it. <laughs> All right, so first question uh, is going to be, what is your favorite Pokemon? Easy. So uh, Togepi is hands down my favorite Pokemon. Oh, okay. um, it's just stupidly cute, like the little egg body, um, but it's just like throughout the anime and all like, of the, the games and everything, it's just like this little bundle of joy Pokemon that's just stupidly happy, but if you tick it off, he just gets so full of rage, which I love. But, yeah, I yeah. love Togepi. I like most like, like the cute style Pokemon, but, yeah, definitely Togepi wins. Yeah, I remember, I remember Togepi was one of those Pokemon that just um, in the – I don't know if you ever watched the, the TV series, but it took forever mm. to hatch. Like, they carried the yeah. egg everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, remember, I think I, when I was a kid I watched through the first and second season – um, but yeah, just like Misty carrying around that egg mm -hmm. for forever, it finally hatched into Togepi. I was so excited as a kid. I was like, oh, it's a real Pokemon. <laughs> Cause I just thought it was going to be like a nothing egg and yeah. she's just been carrying it around for forever. But yeah, that was, yeah. Love it. That's cool. So Togepi. All right. Um, okay. So next question is what have you found the most enjoyable, uh, with Pokemon Go with playing Pokemon Go, I guess, or just in general? Hmm. The most enjoyable. Hmm. Um. At like I know a lot of people say just straight up the community, but at the mm. start for me when I was playing Pokemon Go, um, you know everyone was having these amazing stories of like, oh yeah, I just like went out to um, you know, battle a gym and ended up like talking to all these people and making friends. Um, but for quite a long time for me, whenever I was playing, there was no one really around also playing. Um, yeah. or if they were, they weren't making it obvious and there wasn't like that, I wasn't chatting to strangers and making friends that way. So I was like, oh, I'm missing out on something here. But, um, in the last few months, like, especially pretty much as soon as the raids came out, the first day that raids came out, like running down to the local raid and I've made an amazing group of friends, like literally the day that raids were implemented. So, um, probably the most fun is when I actually get to go out and raid with them. Like it's not all the time cause I'm a busy little egg sometimes but um yeah just being able to actually just hang out with them even if we're not playing pokemon go but um it's just like a nice another little circle of friends to have made through the game mm -hmm. um but if we're talking purely mechanically in pokemon go um i really enjoy hatching eggs so i i really enjoy like just going for walks and hatching eggs and like um i try not to look at you know, when there's been an egg update, I try to look at what's actually hatchable from certain egg tiers because I like to be surprised okay. by it. Um, but at the moment, that's also a little bit quiet because I have got every Pokemon. I'm kind of waiting for Gen 3 because I'm like, oh, what am I going to hatch out of a Gen 3 egg? <laughs> the so, illustrious yeah. Gen 3. <laughs> yeah. So probably raids for the, the human aspect and eggs for the, the game aspect. Okay. And mm. how, like, typically when you have it, so do you usually like spin your Pokestops, wait till you have like maybe five to 10 eggs and then incubate them all and then try and walk? Like how long, like how long a distance do you normally walk? Which is kind of a weird question to ask because each egg <laughs> obviously has like a certain <laughs> like curl that you're uh, supposed to walk. But. Um, pretty much if I have like, if I have like a mixed bag full of eggs, I'll put on two KMs, two K eggs with, the infinite like the infinite use incubator okay. so i don't want to use like the ones that you spend your coins on on 2ks anymore um so i'll just kind of like cycle through and that can be like my slow one that's usually ticking along all the time right. um and then say if i only have a backpack full of 10ks and 5ks i'll either only use the infinite on 5ks or i might use like ones that i've purchased because it's pretty much all i 
use my coins for, like my gym coins is towards egg incubators, really. Apris or Snorlax, that's a bit more exciting than a Remoraid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I, I generally try to fill my backpack with 10K eggs and then um, just go about my normal week. And then as it's getting to like the last kilometer, that's when I start to like plan the video or um, get ready to record. But yeah, I usually just walk quite a bit in my general day-to-day life um, because there's heaps of construction uh, where I work at the moment. My partner drops me off like probably a good 20-minute walk from work and I'll walk okay. to work because it's just impossible for him to drive in and then drive back out to get to his job. That's really um, cool. Yeah, so I get like a good probably kilometre and a half in the morning and in the, then in the afternoon again. So, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Um, a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah, I you you're probably <laughs> sore by the time you get back home. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, next question is how – does it so i don't know if you've done this i i for for those of you listening i went and did like i always do my research like when i do interviews for people and obviously <laughs> you guys uh, zoe and i did a video which you can check out in the in the annotations but uh we did a live stream together but currently right now i don't know if you know but if you google pokemon go zoe you were actually like you're the fifth person that comes up in oh, really? the search engine, yeah, in YouTube. Um, oh, so my question is, how does it feel to be one of the most popular Pokemon Go YouTubers on YouTube right now? That's pretty cool. I had no idea that I actually popped up that high. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's such a, it's such a, yeah. Um, it's a really weird, like, odd feeling, especially. I think because we're kind of like programmed to like, you know, look at sub numbers and things right, like that, like right. sub counts and things like that. Like when, when the community talks to me and everything and everyone is so amazing, everyone's like, Oh, you know, I only watch you and um, trainer tips and reversal. And I'm like, Whoa, like those, that's two very, like two very massive creators that have massive communities, but I'm the only other one that you watch alongside with that. And I'm like, I love like, and don't get me wrong. I love every single person that's in our community and is subscribed to me. So I'm not trying to make it about numbers and things like that. But then I'm like, I've only got like a really small community, but like I'm up there in the th- three people that you only watch. So it's really, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a really weird like contrast to me because everyone's like, yep, yeah, it's you and these two other people that I watch and that's it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, cool. Like yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely feel it in that respect. Like when the people like actually tell me that it's like, yep, yeah, I love watching your videos because of this. Um, and it kind of like, that makes me realize that I'm like a bigger part of the community, I think, than I than I realize due to like the sub number yeah, kind of aspect of totally. it. I think I just need to like disconnect that bit of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's been really exciting to like actually, you know, grow the channel and meet new people through, um, even just through comments or people that always come back to chat in live streams and things like that. Um, it's always exciting. When people are like, oh, I finally made it to a live stream, get to chat with you. And I'm like, hi <laughs> like oh i didn't realize i was such an exciting person like, right, thank you right, for being yeah. yeah so yeah that's still um that's still what like, gets me very excited when people are like oh, it's you and i'm like yeah hey <laughs> so, <laughs> so do you feel like it's still sinking because you, you know a lot of people when when they see that you have a ton of subscribers and mm. a lot of i think a lot of subscribers and viewers tend to judge youtubers based on uh the way they react when mm. you know people either comment it's like oh she did respond to my comment or yeah like do you didn't say my name during the live stream just like really mm. simple stuff like that yeah yeah um definitely um most people i mean because usually my streams i think are a lot more manageable as well like i can read pretty much every comment unless there's like a bit of a a spam I can kind of be like oh yep so Jimmy you said this question you know um here's the answer um and there's only a couple of times where I kind of like miss people's comments but they tend to like you know repost them anyway yeah, if I've missed it, it yeah. a couple of minutes um and that way like I think the community kind of gets all the people that are watching get a bit more out of it because they they got their question answered or they were able to like, you know, chat and make a joke or say, Hey, or say whatever they wanted to and actually have that acknowledged. Like I think the acknowledgement piece is really important for um, the community. Whereas I suppose if you're in a chat where it's just comments and comments and comments and you can only see, you know, you can only 
pick ones out of the air, um, that would be really hard because people would just be like, you didn't say my name or you didn't, you know, read my comment or <laughs> never seen your name before. Um, but, yeah, I'm really grateful at the moment that I have, like, it's manageable and I can actually chat to every right, single person. Right, That's manageable. Really good. I can't even imagine how, uh, like, um, v- Reversal Nick and uh, oh, Mr. do it, where you have, like, over 600 thousand yeah. subs and yeah. each one and of them wants you to engage with them on a personal level it's like really guys <laughs> exactly. yeah and especially like um reading through like if i'm in like their stream as well and you're like looking through the comments like i can't even physically keep up like mm-hmm. um and, and being a mod sometimes well. you're like oh my god i can't even like did someone just say something horrific like for nick's chat you just can't even it just goes too fast yeah reverse you can kind of like manage and you're like okay that person's spamming you know time them out or whatever um but still it just moves so quickly and i think like i'm trying to listen to him and then also read these comments if i was him you know, you're trying to like, you know at least convey some sort of message or you are trying to talk about a point or you know, answer people's comments. There's just no way that you could <laughs> manage it without, like, yeah, someone calling out, you know, really good questions and stuff like that. But, yeah. you know, more props to them for <laughs> continuing definitely, to do it. Definitely. Even, even though they probably get, like, a lot of um, pushback. <laughs> All right. So um, what, made, what made you start uh, – what actually made you want to get into doing a uh, Pokemon Go YouTube channel or just a YouTube channel in general? Um, when it was really weird cause I had started doing some YouTube videos with, um, my like Japan travel videos. Okay. So I was kind of like, that was in my mind. I was like, okay, like I'm going to be on a holiday in Japan. Like people, and when I was like researching like places to go on my holiday, I was finding all these Japan vloggers, so people that were like vlogging their life in Japan or their holidays in Japan. And I'm like, I was just so obsessed with these videos. I was like, oh, I can kind of do that when I'm there. Um, so that's how my channel started was doing like my travel videos when I was on holiday. Um, and then kind of morphed into like, oh, cool. I bought like a lot of really cool, you know, anime and Pokemon collectible things when I was in Japan, I'll do like a, a haul and like a review video of like these things because they're also like, you know, people get just like looking at cool stuff from, you know, a country that you haven't been to or you can't buy it in your country. So I was making some of those videos and then I was like, okay, this can kind of like snowball into, um, you know, all things that are related to, you know, anime and game. And I was really try- like struggling to think of like a way to bring the gaming part into my channel because I didn't really know how to, mm-hmm. you know, physically capture game recording, how to stream, how to do any of that. Because like, right. I think streaming was like Twitch was around, but it wasn't as massive as now and stuff like that. And then as soon as Pokemon Go was announced, I was like, oh. <gasps> I can do that. Like that's on my phone. Like I can, I know how to screen record on my phone or I I know how to like, I can just, you know, with a camera record my phone. I was like, that would be an insane format to just like actually go around and you can film yourself. So even if I couldn't film my screen, I can film myself, show a bit of my screen and be like, here's, you know, me catching Pokemon in day to day life. It wasn't like I had to have an amazing computer or like, you know, a certain console and buy, games on it and then figure out how to record that it was like it's in your hand okay. um and so once the game was announced i kind of started doing some um some research and i think that's when i found nick's channel and he was still um partnered with his other friends so i saw that they were like doing some pre video stuff like to be like oh you know this game's gonna be coming out and things like that and i was like oh cool like i should probably make a video for myself that's like hi, I'm intending to do Pokemon Go videos. <laughs> yeah. Literally the week that I was filming the video, the game dropped early and I was like, no. Oh, <laughs> no. I was just like, I was trying to be like, oh, I'll make a couple of videos like in the weeks leading up to it. And it was like the day that I was like going to hit publish, the game dropped. Oh, um, so I was just like, oh no, I feel like I've missed the early entrance boat, but I like, you know, put it up and I was like, yeah, and the game's out today. Like, isn't that great? <laughs> and it's kind of like, 20 views I'm like awesome <laughs> Sweet. Oh. um so yeah it was a very hard grind from the start because i think a lot of the other channels already had like their Definitely. their prep work that's right and i yeah. was just like so not ready um but yeah that's pretty much how i got into it. it was just like as soon as the game was announced i was like that is an incredible format and obviously like heaps of other people had the same idea um 
but yeah, I just thought that'd be so exciting to be like, I'm going to take you around and like show you, you know, Australia and we're going to catch Pokemon. And, you know, that's kind of like the common interest is the Pokemon bit, but then you get to like see something that's different from your yeah. day-to-day life. As well. So, yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah, it, that's, it's funny that, uh, that time, um, it was a really interesting period when they first announced when Pokemon mm-hmm. Go was going to be released and just the wave of, uh, cause I remember at the time when they first announced it, I, I was like yourself, like I had a similar thought. I was like, okay, uh, I hit, there were a couple of like gamers that I followed that were doing the whole YouTube thing. And mm. just talk, just reporting on Pokemon Go and what it might be like, and like mm. their, their ideas and stuff. And I remember, um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a map. I'm gonna make it like a Google map, and I'm gonna get people to like submit where they think Pokemon might be. And mm. um, it was, it was funny because I, I, I like, I made this video and like showed myself you know like how you record your desktop and like i just uploaded mm. that it's a really badly <laughs> done video i think it's still up there somewhere and it was like it went I, at first it didn't get any views but then like the week after that when they started announcing more stuff about the game and like how it might work it mm. it didn't go viral but it like the views exploded on it and i was just like what is going on it, it was just like a really weird, weird lol and i was mm. like a youtuber so i was like i never saw myself like being in front of the camera and stuff like that that came like way after like that came after like when nick was kind of already established i was like hey i could do that <laughs> like, yeah. which is probably what everybody who thought watching the channel at the time um kind of kind of had the the same idea mm. Which brings me to the next question, great segue, is <laughs> do you think that Pokemon Go is going to... Um, do you think that it will continue to decline? Or do you think Pokemon Go is a very seasonal-based game? So, you know, there's stuff to do in the spring, stuff to do, to do in the summer, and then autumn, and etc.? Mm. Um, I think in a way it will probably continue to like slowly decline. Like I don't think it's, you know, when people are like, oh, the game's dead. I don't like people kind of drop off and, you know, stop playing or a new game comes out that they spend more time on. Um, right. But I think there will definitely be spikes back up. So if it's like if you're following the line slightly on like a gentle slope down, you know, there'll be spikes back up when there's like, you know, Gen 3, Gen 4, whatever, there'll be spikes back up when people get back into it for a bit or, um, yeah. you know, or the people that are just waiting for, you know, they their preferred method of play might be, I want to catch them all and that's it. Like they don't want to necessarily, you know, grind to 40 or get all the badges or participate in gyms, but they're like, I want to catch all the stuff. So they'll probably spike back up when new things are released. But I think definitely like the core base, I think the core base is probably going to stick around. Like there's a lot, you know, even when the game's quiet, a lot of them are still consuming things like, you know, YouTube videos and the, you know, the creators in the community, they still like get involved with like the videos and just having a chat about other stuff or things that aren't even Pokemon related, but they're still staying in the loop of people that are involved in Pokemon Go. So um, I think the format that they have at the moment as well is really good. I know every time it gets towards Christmas, um, the Northern Hemisphere seems to be like, oh, why are you guys going to drop the next generation in winter? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, no one's going to go out. And it's like, there's a Southern Hemisphere too and we didn't get anything. Like, you know, and so I think it's really, at the moment it's really good because, you know, through um, a lot of the really cool events happen while it's winter for, for me in Australia. Like, there's a lot of really cool events. But then we kind of are getting the, it seems like, the next gen seems to drop for our summer which is really good because it means like, okay, cool. cool. We've got something to be out in the sun as well. But also the Northern hemisphere is like, we've been waiting so long for this. We're going to go out anyway, even though it's cold. Yeah. So like I remember last year when gen two dropped, like all of the complaints just disappeared because everyone's like, look at this new thing that I got. And it's like, weren't you saying that you weren't going to go out and it was too cold? Like two days. Exactly. So yeah, I think the current, like, I think they're getting a lot better as well at spacing out their events um, because I think they know at the moment everyone's like, come on, where's Gen 3? Like, where's, you know, Legendary Birds, Words or whatever. Yeah. Um, The most recent event, I think they timed really well with um, 
kind of bridging this gap. And I'm yes. guessing you know, Gen 3 is coming well really yeah. soon. I think they've kind of bridged that, you know, really good with like a 10-day event finishing mm-hmm. and then there's a legendary bird and that's going to go for a bit. And then probably when that wraps up, hey, here's Gen 3 and they're like cycling through to the next kind of thing really well. So I think they're getting getting better out of it too. Yeah, I think that's that's a really valid point. Um, and it, it, it's so true because you can – you, we can so easily just skim over it, especially with the Pokemon community has been such a, a very um, demanding one, like a demand-driven kind of mm, community mm. base. And this event was well executed. They timed it right. They gave us something that was simple and achievable. All we have to do is get up and go out and just yeah. keep catching Pokemon. And it was surprising to actually see that people really invested into that event. Um, and we caught however many billion Pokemon it was yeah. at the end. And I was just like, we seriously reached this? I was like, yeah. like I was worried that it would like, it wouldn't even get past like a hundred thousand Pokemon. I yeah. Think it, I was concerned it, at the start too. Yeah. I was just like, Oh, is everyone going to be, you know, is this enough of an, you know, Right. air quotes incentive mm-hmm. for people to be like yep cool we're back on it like hard and then yeah it was i think it was really timed quite well but it's like all right first you'll get like this little thing and then you're going to get like the double xp yeah. and then some more start and everyone's like oh i like the sound of the mm-hmm. oh yeah okay i could i could do that and then it's kind of like as it's building then it's like oh, okay come on like quick we need to get far-fetched like holy moly like that hype really kind of it, built yeah quite and well course, so. they, they dropped the the ex ray changes which i've got to say are pretty mm. solid yeah yeah they'll um, be pretty good so yeah i think they did really well i think another part of that as well is the communication i think when with yes. increased communication there's going to be increased um you know support or at least patience from the community um i know as soon as this event dropped i was like mm, are they going to have another thing where you know, like GoFest where there's no live counter, like there's no way to actually track your progress. And at the start, I was like, oh, come on, guys. Like they don't even have a way to track it. But then, you know, every night was night for me. They were like doing an update video with like, this is how many you've caught. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. They are actually communicating at least once per day. You know, this is what you've done. So that was really, I think, a massive step up as well. Yeah, definitely. Like it was like they had like these these different layers for just one event three or four youtubers and instagrammers that were like doing their thing and then they were also shooting videos of them they're also putting Mm. out content and then we had like the ex raids and then the different unlocking different stuff from the tiers which i thought was really cool and it made up for uh what happened with GoFest, like how badly that Mm. went Though it, though it was still good because a lot of people said that it was good to just meet other people yeah. from the community, but they stuck to their, their guns with the way they executed it and then increased like what it is that um, people wanted, which because tons of people were like, why can't we just have like a six hour or and like triple double can candy and XP and stuff. Mm. It's just, so it was it was it was cool to see. Um, see them do that all right so next question is um if you could do international decks again what would you do differently oh good question um hmm I think I'd have to, like, make two different, like, responses. So, like, one with, like, not infinite budget, but, like, where I was, like, okay, cool, I can do something pretty um, cool with this. If I had, like, um, you know, additional funds to do it, I'd probably try and go uh, maybe up north a bit more and, um, okay. you know, go to where, around where Corsola spawns in Australia because um, I know there's not a lot of people can get Corsola in their regions because it's right. quite a specific little strip. So maybe um, hang around up there and go um, – because I haven't seen, like, Mystic's latest video, but it looks like he's diving on the um, Great Barrier Reef. But I haven't watched it yet. I just saw, like, the thumbnail. And I was like, oh, cool, that's, like, an awesome idea. But actually do some more, like, underwater kind of um, Catching film stuff. and stuff, yeah. Yeah, like, do some more, like, underwater AR and um, 
actually just kind of show off like, hey, look look at this amazing reef that we have and like we kind of need to protect this thing um, and just maybe show a bit of, if I couldn't like do that, maybe show a bit of a different um, different areas that you don't quite see necessarily in Australia. Like, you know, we've got our, our pop, everyone knows Sydney, everyone knows the Harbour Bridge, everyone knows um, Uluru and like the big rock Um those kind of things is kind of like, oh yeah, it's Australia, but maybe like take them to somewhere where you just wouldn't think that that's what you'd see in Australia. Like we have some um, pretty incredible like rainforest areas, like maybe go to the Daintree rainforest and um, okay. just do a bit more of like a hardcore nature, you know, AR kind of styles one. Um, I think would be really cool just to show just the really different biodiversity. Like I'm really interested in that aspect of like different countries, how we just have wildly different, um, landscapes and animals and things like that. Um, and then if I didn't have an, yeah, if I didn't have infinite budget, <laughs> um, probably trying to show you something similar, but, um, locally and maybe just a bit more like comedy, like just be a bit more, um, silly and lighthearted with it. If I was, if I couldn't do like the big, like, Oh wow, look at how amazing this is. Like probably just go and do something really silly, um, and easy and go find some kangaroos and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow, pretty cool. yeah. so yeah so okay so um what is what's the best pokemon that you have right now that's the next question oh are we going purely based on like cp best or like because um, my best pokemon is my 100 percent togepi like that's the best <laughs> in, in my okay. mind but it's completely useless <laughs> 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 so do you um, do you use that Togepi in gyms or that's just your trophy? I I do I chuck him in to gyms and stuff, but um um I don't really battle with it much because most people just chuck in blissies and giant things like that. Um, sometimes you get cool themed gyms, but so I I do try to use my hundred percent Togepi. I walk around with it pretty much constantly, um, so it's like my favorite. Pokemon and in my mind it's the best because it's my favorite Pokemon and it's a hundred percent. But um, cool. in terms of like <laughs> actual usability, um, I've got a uh, Travatar, which is my Tyranitar. Um, it's sitting around um, 3,400 CP wow. um, with double dark type moves. So I've been saving that one to use against Mewtwo at some point. So that one's like my little tanky, beast and he's got good moves and i'm pretty sure he's got decent ivs as well i'm just gonna check him yeah i'm pretty sure he's best so is he um is he your um your raid attacker as well for for raid pokemon yeah yeah so if he's um if he's got type effectiveness like for moves and stuff he's definitely up there um probably like my general raid team um i mean yeah it depends who we're versing but i've got a couple of like high level uh, right ons that jump in, um, a couple of Tyranitars. Um, I do like to use like my Vaporeons and Flareons and Jolteons when like the opportunity arises, if they're effective, because I think they're cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, yeah, I do also use my Lapras a lot. Um, Lapras okay. was the second, um, especially when the old gym style was around, when it was just gyms stacked with um, like 10 Dragonites, I would have like a team of Cloisters and Lapras um, to take it down because ice type effectiveness. But um, Lapras was the second uh, 10k egg I ever hatched. So I've just had that the, in, the entire time. Oh, no. <laughs> I still don't have Lapras. So I, I, I screamed like... when mine hatched. It was insane. We were like, I had two 10k eggs on. And we're like walking through like Coles. So Coles in Australia is like um grocery shop. Yeah, that's right. So we're walking through getting groceries at the checkout. I'm like, oh, my eggs are hatching. Like my first like big eggs were hatching. And like Hitmon Lee, I think, hatched. And I was like, oh, that's pretty wow. cool. And then Lapras popped out. I was like, oh, it's a Lapras. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm, just, I'm screaming in the line. Um, awesome. But I was just so stoked. And I've just had that the entire time. Like I've had that for more than a year now. So, Yeah. That's cool. A couple of faves up there. I remember the uh, that reminds me of the the Japan event with the laptops. Oh, I'm oh still, I was so see, jealous. I'm still <laughs> waiting for um for my antic to do that in like other countries. Uh, mm. I know that they've done like the safari events, and then they've done the um like the 
like what they did with the Philly Free Streets mm. places, but I would like to see them do that and like do one in Australia and then do one in Europe. Yeah, I think that would be really cool, especially for like the motivation behind the Lapras one was because the area was affected by the tsunami, wasn't it? It was That's to right. like re- yeah. regenerate, um, like re-stimulate the economy. Like I'd love to see that idea replicated all around the world because I'm guaranteed there's definitely places that need it, like think people that have been affected by earthquakes or fires or definitely. things like that. Like you could do that, apply that model to most areas that kind of need a bit of a – yeah. Um, and people drive for it. Like Australia is enormous, like for driving across. Like it can take you – if you get – I mean, if you're going to – like you have to stop for breaks and stuff, but it's like days to drive from one end to the other. Right. Or even just up and down is – like me driving to get Corsola, like we did stop and we stayed like with family and stuff and it was for a birthday. But um, technically like driving from where I am to all the way to where Corsola spawns in Australia is like an 18-hour drive, I think. Wow. That was um, so it's like people kind of like will, I think would do a decent drive, especially if it was for like a massive event, like maybe not 18 hours, but like yeah. – because Australia is really spread out. Like, we're, our main cities are really spread out. Okay. Um, so, you're going to get from, you know, Sydney to Brisbane. Like, that's kind of where you're going to go. You're not going to go to necessarily a, a, a smaller outskirt town along the way unless you're like, oh, cool, like, there's a, you know, a Lapras event or whatever. So, I reckon people would push, like, maybe a six-hour drive. Like, that's probably not unreasonable in Australia, at least, to drive six hours for um, – Definitely. massive event yeah that's cool though um yeah i'd love to see that replicated because i mean i know there's definitely every year in australia we have like crazy fires and crazy floods like it's there's just extremes <laughs> um i think thankfully there hasn't been anything too catastrophic in the last year or so but um really? definitely okay. areas that would need yeah we had like one year that was just really bad like there was an incredibly bad fires um in victoria where a lot of people unfortunately um were injured or killed in the fire and then in the same year um similar thing but north there was just insane flooding um and a lot of people like lost homes and things like that so yeah applying that kind of model to areas that need it i think would be really really beneficial and you know um on their end it's kind of but the effect in the real world is quite incredible incredible yeah yeah that would be cool. Mm. Just for fun. Like, even just to have fun events, like, you know. Exactly. Let's all yeah. go. Especially for fun. Yeah. Like, I would, I would yeah. just like to see see that happen. Um, all right, so what part of creating videos do you find most challenging? Mm, probably for me, um, for me, it's probably more challenging when there's when it's a bit quieter. Um, the challenge is to actually f- find the subject matter to film about okay. um, because I suppose when there's heaps of things going on like, oh, new legendary bird, ho-ho, it's kind of like, cool, there's the subject for my next one or two videos is I'm doing ho-ho raids yeah. um, or, you know, our oh, new Gen 2 eggs are available. Like that's kind of like, oh, cool, this little news point is the subject for my video. But when it's kind of quieter, like say pre this event, like, when there's a little bit of a lull and it's like, okay, we've caught everything. Um, unknown doesn't spawn like ever. So I can't even like, I know. What, what is that yeah. about? they need to do some kind of unknown. Event. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you come to sitting there like, um, I've hatched, I can do another 10 K hatch video, but that's still going to be hatching the same Pokemon. Huh? And that's kind of like the hardest thing for me is like when it's quiet, Okay. Like trying to think about how to do something exciting or film something that's like a bit more interesting, not just like, okay, we're going to go out and do the same thing that we do all the time and just catch some Pokemon, okay. like to make it a bit more interesting. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. So do you ever feel like, um, do you ever feel like you, when you go out to, record something that you have to try and think of the best way to to 
to word it. Like, if, like, when you're creating videos, do you, do you, like, do you write down ideas or do you just go based off of what, um, what's most current that's happening with Pokemon Go? Um, probably both. So okay. depending what's happening, like if there's something that's just absolutely massive where it's like ho-ho rates, I'm like, cool, easy. Like that is what it is and that's what I'm going to go and do. But um, if there's multiple things happening, like I'll try to like um, write down or jot down ideas to kind of like spread them out because I know I used to be really bad at like, oh, I'm going to cover this, this and this in one video and that was just too much like to actually Definitely, first yeah. of all get done but then once you're editing it down it's like this is going to go for forever um <laughs> yeah. so actually like sitting down to plan a bit more cleverly like if if there's you know multiple things going on then i'm like okay one video on this one video on this and then one on the the third thing um and then kind of jotting down what i want to cover or achieve in that video okay. um so yeah probably a combination of both okay. That's that's very cool. That's very organised. That's, that's a lot <laughs> more organised than me. On a scrap of paper that I throw in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get back into a more organised mindset. I used to be very, um, like, and I still have on my channel, like, heaps of, like, planner videos. Like, yes. I really got obsessed yeah. with planners for a while. Um, and I love being organised, but I just kind of, like, got sick of carrying around, like, the world's largest diary. Oh, um, it was just driving me nuts. So I was like, and now I'm like, I need that back. I just need somewhere to like write down lists and organize stuff. So yeah, I'm trying to get back into a bit more organization with um, my videos. <laughs> That's cool. That's very cool. Um, all right. So we've got two more questions left and yep. I'll save the best one for last. Next question though is what does your family think of you being a YouTuber? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so my mum, uh, she's kind of like, oh, like she's not oblivious to the whole YouTube thing, but she's kind of like, oh, like that's really cool, like um, as a hobby. And she knows that it's like it can lead to a job because um, she she kind of knows like locally we have um, Brittany, Brittany Lee Saunders who's like a local Newcastle YouTuber who's just massive, like millions of followers and things like that. And so she she knows that, you know, it can be like quite a big, you know, an actual job or, um, okay. you know, a healthy side project. So she's kind of like, we'll check in every now and then and watch a couple of videos and send me a message being like, Oh, I really liked your video. Like, it's so cute. How you did this? Like <laughs> very, very sweet and supportive. And, um, it's like, cool. Like, that's really interesting. Yeah. Even though she, you know, the extent to her knowing Pokemon is going like, Oh, the Pikachu. Um, <laughs> And that's it. Like, even though, you know, she would buy me that's Pokemon awesome. cards and things as a kid, like, or, you know, she bought me my Game Boy Advance um, and yeah. all that. But she's kind of like, she's like, I know you were interested in it, but I don't know the the full content of it. So, yeah, yeah. she's very, um, like, supportive in her own way. Just being like, oh, it was really cool. Though. I liked the video of this. And I'm like, thank you. That's um, awesome. <laughs> my sister and her partner, they're both pretty funny with it. They, um... They made me like this little scrapbook. It's so funny. I need to, they've still got it because they need to finish the scrapbook, but they've made like an entire scrapbook of like achievements right. um, in YouTube stuff. So they're just like, <laughs> there's like one page where it's just like screenshots of, they've paused the video at like horrible times. So my face just looks like I'm pulling the weirdest face. And there's like a whole page of, of that or, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, just silly things or like, oh, you made like five you know, XK subs, like congratulations and all covered in glitter and then um, stuff where they've just, you know, pulled out the funniest comments that people have made, like all screenshots of like these hilarious comments and made like, um, you know, a whole scrapbook page of that. So they're very funny um, and very supportive and encouraging. They're like, yeah, go girl. But um, they, they deliver that information in a very unique way. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> that's cool though. That, that's yeah. really fun though, because then you yeah, get a chance pretty to pretty. see, like they you you get a chance. You, it's kind of like sharing each achievement you get. So I'm sure they've probably like print screened your latest subscribers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're very funny about it. So, but yeah, it's all all really positive, which is really good. Like, there's no one, thankfully, that's like you know pushback or like, oh, why do you want to do that? Like, that's not a thing. Like, it's. Um, yeah, all pretty positive, which is good. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so the last question is, uh, what are you hoping for next in Pokemon Go? Or I should rephrase this, what do you want 
do, what do you want to see next um, oh. happen in Pokemon Go? Oh, do, do, do. Good For question. 2018. Um, I'm going to avoid like the obvious that's like Gen 3. Like I'm not going <laughs> to like yeah. that. That's clearly coming. So um, what do I want to see the most? Hmm, that's a really good question. Like I, I am looking forward to like new Pokemon and things like that and how the, the, the game meta is going to evolve with that. Yeah. But I think the things that I want to see is more just kind of like smaller, smaller, like lower level improvements or just like a better user interface, user experience kind of things. So okay. um, things like just probably a combination of small things. So like, you know, filtering your nearby I don't want to see if there's a PG and a Radita and Weedle on my nearby. Like, I, I want to be able to filter out certain Pokemon or at least certain tiers of Pokemon so that, that it's like, okay, so, nearby, yeah. yeah, nearby there's a Teddy Ursa. For ages, all I needed um, was Ursa rings to get Blissies out of gyms because I didn't have um, any Machamps. I didn't have any strong fighting types. So I was using Ursa ring with, like, Counter and Hyper Beam, I think. Okay. So all that mattered to me for, like, weeks was Teddy Ursa. So I'm like, if I could have just filtered down to you know, get rid of all the Pidgeys and that, I, like at least I'd be able to see where that was on my map because they were yeah. reasonably common in my area. Um, or, oops, sorry, my cats are just running around. <laughs> That's all right. They're making a lot of noise. Um, uh, sorry, one second. My cat is like eating something plastic -ist. I'm sorry. <laughs> small, small user interface changes. So a filter even see like your local gyms like further than what the radius can currently show like just seeing what color are what color are things that are 10 minutes away from me so i can go like oh i'll go and walk down and like take down that gym um right. little bits and pieces like the my main one was probably the raids crashing all the time but that seems to have kind of resolved itself with the latest update which is really good i haven't been um kicked out of a raid at the moment which has been new and exciting um that what was else? Cool. <laughs> Cause, yeah. cause it used to that just was kick so. Out of the, that was terrible. Oh, so frustrating. Um, hmm. Let me think for one second. Oh, I used to have like a little list that I had written down of things that I wanted to see. The filtering. Oh goodness. Um. Probably like you know better better search functionality and things like that. Like they're all really minor things, okay. like really really minor things that I think could like boost the game. But yeah, I am definitely excited for Gen three and like all of the different changes that's going to bring because I want to hatch new things, I want to hatch new eggs and um yeah. catch new stuff. But yeah, I think there's a lot of like really um, smaller level bits of feedback that you know the community's been giving for a while that I think would make awesome improvements to the game um and if we're going to bring it down to like you know pvp or trading um i think i would possibly prefer trading yeah over those two um Definitely. i know a lot of people more want pvp like a lot of people are like where's the you know user you know battle interface but i mm -hmm. think um for me trading at the moment because i know with um kind of with the community that we're building here online like when i do travel I want to be able to take Kangaskhan to other people um, exactly. and be able to like yeah. give them that. So if I'm um, traveling or meeting new people, I want to be able to like give them things that they don't have. Um, and that's something that I've done in, in all of the um, Pokemon, like the 3DS games and the DS games, I would um, always, so as soon as like the new game came out, so like X and Y, um, I would, you know, get my starter and get to the point where you could like breed Pokemon and breed heaps and heaps and heaps of that that starter Pokemon, okay. and then trade with trade with someone else who was doing the same, but for the other starters. Right. And then I would just wonder transfer or just give away or like say, hey, I'm giving away heaps of the starter Pokemon, so everyone can get one of everything of the starters like really early on. Okay. Um, because I just really, I don't know, I just really enjoyed like being able to be like, oh, here you go, like you can have like these things as well, like that you haven't got yet. Um, so I think trading for me is, has always been like a massive part of how I play the games. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So cool. I agree with you. Training is like top of the list. <laughs> yeah. I think the, yeah. the struggle they have is how to, and, um, because of the way games are right now, it's how to, um, incentivize, is that the right word? Mm. How to give yeah. players incentive to trade. Cause obviously mm. with, doing candies 
they eliminated uh, evolutions that happen via trade, trading. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now that that's gone, that's one less feature that trading has. So now it's a case of, well, I've caught everything. We just got mm. regional Pokemon, so I have like two out of, what is it, six regional Pokemon that are available. Mm. Um, why do I need to trade? That's what a lot of people are going to say. So yeah. I guess the challenge when I what, am what, is, What's the incentive for me exactly, to yeah, give what, away my Pokemon kind mm -hmm. of thing? And it has mm. to be, definitely has to be tangible. Like it can't just be, oh, I get double XP or I get s Stardust. You know, it mm. has to be something valuable. I don't know. So, mm. But there's, there's Especially definitely... the individual. Like if for me, for example, I would just be happy enough to kind of do it. Like I'd be like, yep, yes. here you go. But for other people, they'd be like, oh, maybe not so inclined. inclined like they're not into yeah. trading or things like that. So, yeah, how do you kind of get them involved? involved and, yeah. But I think mm. you're right. I think as long as the option is available, there will always be people who want to trade. Mm, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like I just, I just envision, like I just have in my mind like – I don't know why it would just be like super exciting to be able to, and especially to communicate that you're available to trade in the game. Yes. Not that you have to find someone on discord or find someone on messenger and say like, hi, I'm trading Like for, to actually pop up in the game on yes. the map and be like someone nearby is trading. Do you want to like mm -hmm. take up this trade? To just be like, Ooh, I'm in this park cool. and I'm, I'm offering up 30 Kangaskhan to whoever, whoever needs them for whatever Pokemon, I don't really care. Yeah. But just to know that, like someone would be like, Oh my God, I can finally like get this thing that I haven't had or, um, I remember when I was um, working in the game shop, um, these kids would come in and they were like kind of kind of new to Pokemon-ish, but they're like, oh, I just haven't got any of this Pokemon and I really want this one. It's not my favorite, but I can't get one. So I was like, come in tomorrow and I'll bring in my 3DS and trade you. And they were just so – it was just like this – uncontained like childhood happiness they were just <laughs> so excited when i got this pokemon yeah and i was yeah. like that's, that's no like it's not it's no sweat off my back to do that but for them it was just like i've got a sylveon in the game dad like this is amazing and i'm like that's kind of like why you do it you're like exactly. it doesn't hurt me to do it but it makes someone really happy, happy. Yeah. Um, and you kind of get that good little like oh i feel good feeling so yes yeah i just imagine like if trading was available to be like here's 30 kangaskhan like everyone go for it have a great day mm -hmm. and just like knowing that you kind of like helped someone get closer to their goal of like, oh, goal. finally yeah. I'm a bit closer to finishing the decks or I'm closer to this badge or yeah That's or I've got my favorite Pokemon so yeah all right well that is it for the questions so um hopefully everybody that has listened to this uh enjoyed it and a huge huge thank you to Zoe for agreeing to do this because I know how busy you are so making time can often be pretty difficult but thank you for being on Socket Radio and uh, yeah that's it is there anything you'd like to say to all the listeners I just want to say like a massive thank you for having me on like I was just really excited to get the like hey do you want to do a little interview I'm like hell yeah that sounds awesome <laughs> um, so yeah just thank you guys for having me on and I hope you guys are having an incredible day or night or whatever time you're listening to this go up um and yeah thanks for having me on if you do have any you know other questions i'm always always free to answer stuff and if we i'm always happy to come back on another socket and hang out as well so thank you for having me smart so again a huge huge thank you to zoe two dots for agreeing to do this interview guys i think this was pretty legit and uh for those of you who are interested about the amazing zoe two dots you can go ahead and check out the uh, link in the description go ahead and subscribe to her channel if you're new uh, i do weekly videos so does zoe so catch us on our channels when we upload for now i hope this has encouraged you giving you something to at least laugh or giggle at or smile at this uh, sat Saturday evening or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I appreciate you being here. Remember that you are not alone in your circumstances and that no matter what you're going through, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Uh, never forget that because it's the truth. And uh, whether you believe it or not, I believe it for you. So again, thanks for listening to this episode and I will catch you guys next week with a brand new video. Thanks for listening.